Tadl with Corporate Cars, delivering affordable, luxury European vehicles nationwide. It is now 23 to 6, and Cameron Slater from Whale Oil is with us. Hello, Cameron. Hey, Larry. And uh, we've got David Farrah from Kiwi Blog. Hello, David. Hello. David, you first on this. Mr. Calliffe, he resigns over the weekend, but he wants the job again, and he might get it. The unions and membership could install Mr. Calliffe again as leader. What's your take on all of this? Well, I can't do better than quote the text I got on Sunday afternoon from a very senior Nat who said, up until today, I never believed in Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny. Um, And I think that sums it up, that the thought that the guy who got them to their lowest ever result in 100 years has the support, I think, of five or six MPs in the caucus only is still going to put the party through a four-month battle. It's almost unbelievable. Clearly, Cameron, he believes that he is able to win the primary backed by the membership and the unions. Well, he says he's been consulting widely, but I'm given to uh, understand that what that means is he runs around the house looking at every mirror and basically (laughs) saying, mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? And, And that's about the level of support that he has out there. I've heard from a large number of members who actually want the guy's throat cut, uh, but they're far too polite to actually say that. I mean, David's right. It's 92 years. It's the worst result in 92 years. And this fool thinks that he can uh, lead the party again and have the unions and the members foist uh, him back upon the caucus. If I was the caucus, and, and I'm not sure they've got the courage to do this, Uh, I would be um, sitting there saying, well, if you give us Cunliffe back, we're just going to use our 60% plus one and uh, and nail him again and then have another leadership uh, ballot. And it's just going to go on and on like that. But but the reality is here is Labour is splitting themselves apart very quickly. See, the thing, David, on a human level... You would, if you were in that position, your MPs don't back you quite clearly. Why would you bother? Most people wouldn't even bother trying to run for the leadership again, would they? I mean, most wouldn't. No, they, they almost would say as a relief that it gives them an excuse to sort of go gracefully. Um, you have to have a total supreme belief, I think, in your ability or perhaps a hatred of your colleagues to say, I don't care that I've only got a fifth of my caucus behind me, I'm going to force myself on. It's almost masochistic because he may win. Because when you look at, and I've done the numbers on this, one EPMU delegate is worth 29 members when it comes to the vote. Most of the other unions too, their delegates, and there's only a few dozen of them, have huge influence. And it's very hard to know what the members will do. But I tell you what, if you do go onto the left-wing blogs where some of the Labour activists are, there's no one saying it's time to run. They're all lining up behind Kamba. So I think Grant will win it, but I don't think it's a done deal. It's going to, we'll tell you what it's going to look like. It's going to look like a rerun of 300. It'll be, it'll be like <laughs> Sparta all over again with all of the technicolour blood and guts spraying everywhere because that's the reality of the situation that we're seeing here. So we're destined for further acrimony, aren't we, should Mr Cunliffe win again? I mean, how for, you talk about 60 plus 1, Cam, but is there a chance that the MPs will rebel, they'll walk, there's mutiny? What do you see? Well, I think you, you could be looking at a mutiny. It's just a question of who's going to be put into the lifeboat and cast adrift. Uh, th- there is no tolerance in caucus for the shenanigans of David Cunliffe. And he really is uh, uh, losing support. I mean, when Ian Lees Galloway, who's not the most well-liked MP anyway, I mean, there's plenty in the caucus who want him rinsed just as badly as Cunliffe, Uh, when he's out there uh, hedging his bets, then you know that that David Cunliffe's in in dreadful trouble. He's basically left uh, with Sue Maroney, and her only achievement in all of her time in Parliament is to increase the majority of the people she stands against. I'll disagree slightly with Cam here that if Cunliffe wins, I don't think caucus will rebel and go up against the party, which would be a crisis. But what you'll have to see happen is that 
many of them will have to resign for they've made it very clear they have no competence, they can't work. And we're, we're not talking big caucus in the first place. You could be talking somewhere between a quarter and a third of the MPs, the more senior experienced ones, would either do by-elections or announce they'll be retiring at the election. And some will argue, as the left blogs do, that's good in the long term for Labour. But in terms of winning in 2017, if you're losing all your most experienced MPs, um, very, very difficult. So, uh, D- David, clarify, you mean a, a bunch of MPs could resign and create uh, by-elections? Some oh, could, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, some of them just could not handle another three years um, in that caucus. I so so some like list MPs, like David Parker, would probably quit. Uh, Clayton, Cosgrove. Clayton Gosgrove actually needs to have his throat cut for the poor uh, way that he's been carrying on in the last week. Uh, but th- whether or not there's anyone with the stones to do that uh, leaves me wondering whether that could happen or not. But, but basically what David's saying here is that uh, Labor's got a, two, two, a two-term strategy to try and win back the Treasury benches, and even then it's looking very desperate because they have to have a massive caucus renewal. Either they have to uh, get rid of the ABCs uh, through selections, through retirements and the like, and then go into an election with a bunch of newbies, and then have policies that are going to still appeal to middle New Zealand. And that's the real issue. It isn't the leadership. It isn't the caucus. It's they've just got um, dud policies that nobody wants. And and that's the real issue. Until, you know, bizarrely you had... Robert Reid from the first union saying that Labor needed to go further left. Did he? Does he not know how maths works? Sixty-five percent of of voters voted for centre or centre-right parties in the election, and he's saying go further left. And so are the activists in Labor. It's it's tone deafness from the leader down. We'll come back in just a moment. Cameron Slater and David Farrar on the huddle. It's now seventeen to six. Asking questions and waiting for answers. It's Larry Williams Drive with ANZ, providing business banking expertise near you on News Talk ZB. We're back with the Huddle Cameron Slater and David Farrow. Uh, let's carry on with the Labour Party leadership, uh, David. Uh, so we've got Mr Robertson contesting. Do you believe Mr Shearer will contest? I think it's unlikely because there seems to be a desire for a clean contest. Shearer can be a distraction. He doesn't like either faction because the faction undermined him and the Robertson faction rolled him. But he, he, he simply can't win. So I think he will not enter the race, but he will be potentially a significant player in terms of uh, what he comes out and says. What do you think, Cam? Two-way contest? Well, I think there needs to be a, a, a third candidate in there, someone who can actually unite the factions, although I think that's an impossible mission. There's too many people in there who have either been the leader or want to be the leader for there to be any sort of harmony inside the Labour caucus. But but let's look at Grant Robertson's behaviour over the past week. This is a guy who delivered up third place for Labour in his own electorate in the party vote, and he's claiming some sort of mandate to to be the leader. But bizarrely, he ran around uh, trying to orchestrate a, a coronation of himself as leader, sort of a, a backdoor um, application uh, to be the leader to steer down Cunliffe. And it was only Cunliffe resigning that forced uh, that option to disappear. But that's what uh, Grant Robertson was planning. The caucus uh, people that I've been talking to in Labour uh, tell me that, that Grant is incredibly nervous of losing another ballot. He didn't want to have a a competition, uh, and he tried to orchestrate that, uh, as I said, uh, via the back door, uh, the ascension to the leadership of of the Labour Party. Okay, and David, how do you view that? I mean, it's nothing unusual, uh, politicians plotting, orchestrating, you know, a a coup or whatever. What do you see in it? Well, it's quite high stakes for Grant. If he stands, which he is, and loses for a second time against Cunliffe, he's not going to end up being leader of the Labour Party ever. And in fact, you have to say, look, if David Cunliffe pulls off the what I might call impossible and gets re-elected leader despite leading them to their worst ever loss, 24%, 80% of the caucus sent to he's a leader for life almost. You know, if he can win the membership ballot under these conditions, mm. 
he'll never lose it. So, so the fingers crossed, three... David. Fingers crossed. <laughs> well, well, uh, I think fingers crossed. Uh, Joel T certainly, I think, will be hoping Mr. Cutting one. All right, Cam. Now, just briefly, Act and United Future seal their deals. So there's nothing that stands out here. Mr. Dunn gets a ministerial job outside cabinet. Mr. Seymour, Under Secretary. Minister of Education and regulatory things, and, uh, I mean, there's nothing shock and awe in all, all of this? No, I don't think so. I, I'm pleased to see that uh, John Key didn't give uh, Seymour anything higher than, than what he's got. I don't think he deserves uh, anything of the sort. He's, uh, he's a newbie. He, he should be very grateful that he has got that little lifeline that he has, but, uh, but that's about the way of it. Um, Peter Dunn uh, has got what he always gets, um, but uh, reality says that this is perhaps his last term uh, in, in mm. Parliament. Uh, his party actually doesn't really exist any, anymore, and uh, that's the best he's ever going to get as well. What's your view, David? What I'm a bit surprised about, but perhaps not on reflection, is there's no solid policy concessions in either of the two agreements. There's a number of areas they say, look, we'll talk and work together on. But in the past, you've normally had quite specific policy concessions. I think the difference is, of course, national can govern alone. It could actually say, we've got six to one MPs, we don't need anyone else. It's offering um, confidence and supply agreements to three other parties, not because they need them, but because they think it, it, it makes them a more stable government, but it means that they're the ones who really get to set the terms, and that's why we've not seen any policy concessions, just really one minor ministerial role and one under secretarial role. Okay, thank you, David Farrer and Cameron Slater. News Talk ZB, we have some sport in just a moment. It's now nine to six.